Uh, yeah, this is Bang Bang Ray Hawk. Please press the like button and subscribe. Yeah, um, years ago, um, people was asked, people, well, a few people asked me, how do I get on drugs and how do I get off drugs? Um, to get on drugs uh, was quite hard for me, really, because I don't take anything. I don't even take, at that time, I wasn't taking anything at all, aspirins, anything, you know. I then I got into the voids and it, it all kicked off from there, really. Um, I was I used to look after uh, three or four people weekends, um, uh, you know, go go out to Bentley, go all the all the big clubs, and uh, I never took drugs three or four days uh, with them. I never used to drink. Um, I know I how I took I stayed away. I don't know, but I used to. I had to, and uh, there was all on sort of once some sorts of drugs, purple arts, and all these sorts of things, different sorts of drugs, uh, speed. You know, ease and you know, everything, uh, double dubs, and you know, anyway, all loads of loads of different sorts of things. And if you were taking coke, yeah, and I was just seeing taking the lines, uh, listen, it wasn't it? I wasn't that wasn't for me. I didn't like it, yeah. Anyway, and uh, and then um, one day I went to uh, a club called Pal Joey's. Um, uh, there was uh, a girl there, she, beautiful woman, and she was lying under the. Uh, Laying on the piano with a mate of mine, I kept nicking the drinks, bottles of champagne. And uh, anyway, I wound up with this woman, yeah, her name was Danny, and she was absolutely stunning, yeah, really, really beautiful woman, yeah. And got a place in Kingston, uh, absolutely stunning place, Pl spent plenty of money on it, I had plenty of money at that time, I was getting good money per week. Uh, so I put it all into my place, all into Danny, and then she fell pregnant with my boy. Sunny, and then we just carried on, yeah. And um, as you do, as we all do, uh, you got my mates is to come over, and uh, one of my mates uh, come from Wolverhampton, black guy called Junior Joseph, nice, nice guy. You know what I mean? Proper nice guy. And me and my Danny had an argument one day, and uh, she went and and he said to me, "Calm down, calm down." Come on, have Brian Charlie. I went, no, no, don't say drugs. He said, no, I have one. Just have one, calm me down. And that's what kicked me off. I had one and I got to like it, yeah. And then I bought a bit and then I bought a bit more. Then I bought a bit more. And then at the end of the day, I started buying ounces of it, you know. And weekends, uh, having parties around the house with my pals and, and all that. And uh, when, she, when eventually my, my girlfriend came back, Danny, and there was murders with her, she didn't take drugs at all, and she went crazy. And, um, you know, and then she left me again, and then I, it got worse, yeah, it got worse. And I was buying big bits, big bits, and I was robbing people for big bits of drugs, and it got, it got really out of hand, yeah. So eventually I moved to, um, I moved to a place called Brentford, uh, by the docks, and met a guy called Compton, black guy called Compton, very dangerous guy, he's uh, dead now, Compton, rest in peace, mucker. And, uh, you know, and nice guy, black guy, on the crack really bad, and a dangerous guy, man. He was like, he, he'd been done for a shooting, got 12 or 15 years, always always walking around, gunned up, mate, always strapped up to the eyeballs. Uh, you wouldn't want to muck about of him. Not, not very, not to a, a, a Thick set guy, skinny guy, well built though. Um, but when I say skinny, I mean I mean maybe thirteen stone, but cut, ripped, to about six foot four, ripped, yeah. But he he was always, as I say, always strapped up, always very dangerous. And I met him in the docks one day. I was walking down in the docks and I started chatting to him. I had the dog and started chatting to him, stroking the dog. And I said, "Come up and have a chat." He come up and have a chat and got on the pipe. And I said, "What's that?" He went, ah, oh, it's crap, don't get involved in that, mate. Anyway, um, I was on a coke. I was on a few lines of coke. He bought some coke with me. And then I then I got a bit um, nearly the woman. I got on the phone to this woman. She came up and had a good night with her. She, I got on the coke with her. She was lovely. She said to me, why don't you find me a phone and I'll, I'll bring a couple of mates around. So she did. And she bought... Uh, these two friends, she bought one girl come up, but the lift stunning, and also another girl come up, she was more stunning, and she had a fur coat, and she was just 
unbelievable. She, you know, she came into the flat and we got on the coat, we was on the coat for hours, yeah. Done a lot of money, mate. And also, she got my mate Compton come in and uh, he said to this girl, but was talking to her and she went, I'll be back in a minute. And they shot off and uh, they come back. She come back again and she come back and started getting on the pipe. I see him do it, she started doing it. And said to me, I'll try that. She said, no nah, way, I ain't getting on that stuff. She had one. She said, let's try it. Boom. One, mate, crack. The first one I had, nearly blew my head off, knocked me right back. Um, and then it, it just kicked in. Compton was coming around my house every day. Um, he was putting crack in, in ash, all the air in ash. And I was, I hid my bottles in a, in a cupboard, so I didn't want no one to see them. Uh, these big avian bottles and we with, with a pen in it and all that anyway and um i was hooked mate i was on it big time do you know what i mean i was every day out crack crack every day just not out of all my other powers wasn't doing no no looking after no one or nothing yeah just got crazy on it and i was spending sometimes i don't know what a grand a week which is nothing yeah and I was, you know, with this girl, I was just having a good time, mate. I'm just enjoying my life, doing whatever I want to do. Just, I had plenty of money, who cares? And uh, I remember we went to the Radisson in Woolian, in, in Heathrow Airport, and just got on the crap really, really bad. I'd done 14 grand in two days, three days, and they had a load of girls there, big magnum bottles of champagne, little little uh, big jacuzzi, well not little, big jacuzzi in the room, just got mad, mad. And I was I was hooked on crack, yeah, bad. And I was doing all sorts of things to get money for crack. And this is what ruins everything, mate. Um, the drugs took over me, the drugs was telling me what to do, rather than me telling what the drugs to do, rather than me taking it when I wanted to take it, the drugs were telling me that Come on, have a pipe. Come on, have this. And lines, having a, coat, having a line of coat was not nice. I didn't like it. It wasn't the same thing, wasn't the same buzz. Just, just mad. Um, I stopped training. I was, you know, old. and then, I mean, before that, I got on the voids with the coke and I become a very violent person. Just gone mad, chucking things all around the house. Arguing, that's why Danny left a lot, left me because of that as well. Um, going absolutely mad, you know, throwing things around the house and just madness. Um, going out hurting people on, on coke and, and steroids. Come on, I'm nearly 19 and a half, 20 stone. Big, big, powerful man. Going mad, you know. Anyway, so anyway, the one I eventually moved to Brentford, I got on a crack with Compton this, and, 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 and a girl I met, Ario. And we got on the crack really, really bad. I was going out well, every day, just buying crack. And all of a sudden, mate, your money, you start doing 14 grand in two or three days and doing a grand a day and a this, that, and the other, a grand a week. And uh, all of a sudden it becomes, you become, you're not working, your money's gone. You know, money's gone, mate. I had to go back to Kingston to get some money, uh, get in the house somehow. Find out where it was, get the money, come back, go out to Brentford and, and do the same thing again. Eventually I got skin, um, so I was just robbing people, left, right and centre, going in their houses, petrified of me, just giving me money to get me out of the way. I become a crackhead, I become a nobody, you know what I mean? A nobody, I become a nobody, mate. And I remember one time right, right, I lost my gaff in, in um, Kingston, my, my, my woman had it. Um, I lost my place in Brentford. Now I've become a down and out, really. And I moved to a place called Shepherd's Bush. Uh, I was on the crack really bad there. I mean, so bad. I was like walking around, walking around the streets at night, late at night, two, three in the morning, looking for fags, looking for cigarette butts and taking them and putting them in my pocket, going back to the flat I had and opening all up and smoking fags. Come on, I mean, going from one up there, mate, going right down to nothing, yeah? And 
absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy, mate. It's just not, you know, just madness. Madness, 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 mate. Everything went just crazy for me, yeah? And um, so when I eventually, when I, I had to, I had to uh, get money. I had to get money. I had to get lots of money. I was um, thinking about what I do, what to do, how to do it, and I was getting people say, asking me this, asking me that. Should I do this? Should I do that? Um, I'm going. Well, I don't know. What would you reckon? And you know, in the end, uh, I had to go back to. I had to work. You know, I had to do silly things. I was doing silly things, getting two or three grand here and there, but smoking it in two days. Really bad on crack. Crack took over my life, mate, and it's, it was a drug that I didn't want went around me, you know. And I thought, what the, f what what is it worth it? it? Is this worth it? No, it ain't, mate. It ain't worth the, it ain't worth the aggro that goes with it. Yeah. Why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? You know what I mean. So anyway, um, a couple of my pals. Uh, come up and see me one day and say, look, um, you're interested in a bit of work? I said, what sort of I said, well, I'll tell you what happens. Well, we got into a company in uh, over in Park Royal and uh, it was a car farm warehouse, warehouse a, big, a big massive warehouse. I said, okay. We got through the water back and next year on the phones. I went, oh, okay, go on. Are you interested? I went, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I said, listen, in, the, in there was a great big container and full of phones, anyway, I go, why is that going in there? I go in there as old Bill, custom exercise, my mate's a custom exercise, I'm SO19, go in there, rob it. Get all the phones, smash all the police cars up in the air and vans and shit and everything, yeah? Drive out of there, got back, sold some phones, anyway, I get nicked. I get put, I've got my mates at Supergrass, he put our glasses up, I get put into uh, the scrubs. They're telling me that I'm looking at an IPP, I don't know what an IPP is anyway, but crack and ruin my life, mate. Crack has took everything from me. Everything. Not only has it took everything from me, but I lost houses, I've lost money, I've lost everything. It's just crazy over drugs. Is it worth it? No, it ain't. Anyway, so now I'm in the scrubs. I've got, I'm detoxing off of crack now. I don't know nothing about drugs or getting off of drugs or whatever. All I know is that I want drugs. And I've got to get off it, mate, because I'm going to go and get a big bit of bird here, mate, and tell him about his thing called an IPP. I don't know what an IPP is. No one in there seems to know what an IPP is. So I think to myself, mate, if you get on drugs in here, mate, in prison, you are never, ever, ever going to get out. You're going to be a mess. Because whilst I was in there, there was people I know, people, big, big people, big faces as well, yeah? On brown, heroin, yeah? And I could hear them shouting at the window at night time. Slings are lying, slings are lying, you got anything? And all that, and crying. Some people were crying because they can't get it. I mean, literally crying. And I thought to myself, what the fuck's going on here? I don't want that, mate. And another guy uh, comes from the Val, Fatty, he was in there, he was getting, he was getting a uh, crack in, you know, and asked me if I wanted to put, because he knew that I wanted it. Go, there's a big story before this, but I'm just cutting it all short, you know. And he's telling me do I want it, and he, he's there in his cell, coming in the cell, showing me it, and now, I mean, I'm, <sighs> mate, I want it, don't I? I want to get on the pipe, but I know I'm in prison. I've got no money, what am I going to do, you know what I mean? But no, I don't want it. I've got to keep off it, mate. No. So what I decided to do, I decided to work. I get a job in there. I work, 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 work. I'm doing it every day. 
every day I'm going myself. I'm doing press ups, maybe two, three press ups. I'm so weak, it's unbelievable. Big man, this weak crack has took it all, everything from me. All what I had, it just took from me. It's just everything's gone from me. The power, everything I was, yeah, it's all gone. Um, I and I'm a man, you know, I'm a proper man. I, I, you know, I am who I am. I ain't letting it go. So I decide to get into my press ups, doing two, two a day. Then it get three a day. Then I get gets more. And I'm getting sit ups. I'm doing tricep extensions. I'm doing tricep dips. I'm doing all sorts of things with bottles and everything, trying to get into this, keep myself fit. Getting three or four bottles on a broomstick, working out, press ups, press behind the neck, press in front, doing triceps. I'm doing everything, trying to get myself really fit. Every day, and then they give me a couple of jobs. They give me a job mopping downstairs on 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 the ground floor, yeah? Now, it's not easy, mate, to mop, believe me. It, it is, but it ain't when you're on, trying to get off of something. I'm mopping like a, I used to mop like a lunatic, yeah? And really mop, like, no, no, mop, 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 get out of it, get, keep mopping and doing press-ups. It got to the stage uh, where I started to do 10 press-ups. And I thought, oh, this is, I'm feeling, starting to feel better in myself. Um, I'm still de detoxing really, really bad, yeah? I'm doing press up, press ups every day. Uh, there's a lot of story I've missed out, yeah, but it, I'm just giving a thing about how it is, how it was, yeah? And in the end, uh, I'm doing sit ups, started doing my sit ups, it was really, really, really hard sit ups, yeah, for me. Um, I'm getting good, I'm getting more bottles, I'm training more, I'm not going to the gym yet because I don't want to mug myself off as such. So eventually I was doing 15 press up sets of 10s and always, you know, having a good work, having a good sit down for a little bit and then get back to 15 press ups. I'm getting good at it now, you know, it's all coming back. Not all coming back, but I'm, 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 I'm not on, I don't, I'm still detoxing, yeah. I always say a screw comes up to me one day, he says, hello, will you go? And he knows me from years back. Uh, what, are you, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm just doing cleaning up, mopping the landings and bits that we've been told. He says, well, I want a job. I said, I've got a job, Gov. He said, no, I want a job in a place called the Conobair. And it's a drugs unit, you know. Uh, yeah, I don't well, well, mind, Governor. Yeah, I'd love that, yeah. He goes upstairs, goes through this big door. It's all self-contained. You're away from the prison. But there's about 60, what, 60 people in there? Maybe not even that. Like, how was that? 10, 20? It's about 35 people in there, yeah? all on drugs, all detox. It's a detox wing, yeah? To get people off drugs. He ain't saying to me, you're on any sort of drugs, medication, I'm not saying nothing. All I'm in there for, I'm in there for to clean their cells when they're sick. I'm, I've got all my certificates for this, that, and the rest of it. I've got my white, well, I wear a white suit to clean the cells out and, and this, that, now. Now I'm with people the same as I was on crack, on the heroin, but I was on, never touched heroin, never touched it in my life. I was on more crack, heroin, and they're coming in, detoxing, and in the right, bad way. I think to myself, fucking hell, man. That was me. I was exactly the same as they, they were. I went, or oh, they are. I went, mate, how did I get to that? To that? I've seen people on crack and night times crying because they can't get what they want. And I'm telling them, come on, come down to the gym, do something with me, do some press ups, do something. And they didn't want to know, mate, like I didn't want to know, yeah? But that strengthened me because I've always, all my life I've boxed. All my life I've trained, but that me that inside me made me want to train even more, you know. And a couple of guys come into the detox unit to work in there, and one guy was in there. This guy, proper face, I ain't gonna say his name. Proper proper face, mate. And he come in there working, and he used to get me. We used to go down the gym. He started me in the gym, 
training me every day. I'm getting better and stronger. And one day he came up to me in, 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 in the detox unit, he said to me, he said, what's the woods? I went, no, I'll leave it, I was on it before. He said, I went, he got me on the woods. And I started to pump, pump big weights again, started getting strong again, really strong. I was in the detox unit for two years, really getting big, powerful again, like, sure, ridiculous strength again, yeah? And I thought to myself, after two years, right, I'm now off drugs, mate. I'm off crack, I'm off coke, I'm off anything, but I'm on steroids. So am I going to go back to where I was? Now, I've got to get off the roids, mate, because they're giving you tests in there now and again, blood tests. I don't want to get chucked out of this thing, right? The roids is different, I suppose. It's in my system or whatever, yeah? Anyway, uh, I eventually get my IPP. I eventually um, get involved with Pete Doherty, um, taking pictures, getting money, and he's on drugs, heroin, and everything. It's a shame to see a geezer who was so famous, his face is black. His face is black where he's smoking, the brown, it's all right everywhere. His cell got all bits of black stuff floating around the cell where he's on the brown really bad. So I decided to take a picture and get some money for it, and I did, which is I'm out of all the year. But I got off the drugs, right, through this, mate, through this up here, mental, and training, and working out, yeah. Drugs ain't no good for you, mate. They really, really ain't. They all give you a good buzz. But it's like everything. When you're taking something, coke, crack, the buzz is phenomenal. But it don't last. It don't last. What's it last for? Three minutes, four minutes? That big buzz, and you've got to go back on it. And you're looking everywhere to, to find it. You're on the floor, picking up toenails, picking up bits of fucking white, bits of paper, picking up anything that looks white to put on the pipe. Then you're killing yourself because you're burning it. It's terrible, you know what I mean? But it's that initial hit in it when you get that hit yeah but it, mate it just don't last does it even coke it, what does it like how long does it last for couple of minutes couple of minutes coke that's it got to have a couple more lines couple more lines feeling good how do you feel when it's all over how do you feel when you can't get no more how do you think it's too late to get any more how do you feel? And you can't sleep. You're tossing and turning. You wake up in the morning, nose is all blocked up. You think, oh, you're in the right bad way. You know what I mean? All of a sudden you want another light to lighten you up again. It goes on, mate. It goes on. And all happens at the end of the day, your skin. How many people out there today now, right? It's Christmas. How many people out there today are on Coke have got no money? because they're on coke. They've got no money to enjoy their Christmas because they're on coke. They've got no money to buy the kids' presents. They've got no money to buy the wife presents because they're on coke. They'd rather be on coke than they would buy presents for the kids and their wives. I realise, mate, it's no good, you know. It's ruined my life. It, um, it got me an IPP. Um, and then mate, the IPP, no one not under, understood it. I've done 20 years 20 years on this IPP. I've done 10 years in prison. I've done 10 years out of prison. All four, a thing called crack. I've lost everything. I've lost everything over drugs. Everything. I had a beautiful wife. I had a beautiful, I, no, I had a beautiful girlfriend there yeah, called Danny. Absolutely stunning. I had a young boy called Sonny. I had a young girl called Ruby Ray. I lost Danny. I lost my son. I lost my daughter. I've got a wife, ex-wife, Christine. I lost her. I lost my, my boy. 
og los mor doer, og los mor brothers, og los mor sisters, og los mor mom. To lose your mom. 26 and a half years in prison. I lost my mum. My mum, she must have pined for how long she pined for, for not me seeing me, you know what I mean? And I'll come out of prison, I'm with my mum for four years, and then she dies. My dad had already died. I've lost everything. Brothers, sisters, mums, dads, wives, girlfriends, kids, everything. I've lost everything. Down to drugs. Down to crack, cocaine, down to cocaine. You lose it all. At the time, it's a big time child potatoes. Anyway, this is Bang Bang Right Hill. Please press the like button and subscribe. Thanks so much, yeah. Later.